Welcome yet again to another edition of Mr. Badamalch's Distance Learning with his awesome introduction music. That was a guy named Mano Chow. My name is Mr. Badamalch and I am teaching from a different room than you, which is a big bummer. However, today what we're going to be talking about is the causes of World War I. I know, it is insane. Now, before in Lesson 1 and 2, we talked about who are the players in this war and also what was the war? How long did it take uh, and what major countries and also um, secondary countries in regards to the military conflict um, played a part in this whole entire war, right? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it off a little differently. What I want you to do is this. I want you to start off with a do now and answer this question. Uh, we've talked about war actually quite a bit in this class. We talked about it like imperialism. We talked about it in seventh grade American Revolution. Um, and I'm not advocating for war whatsoever, and you guys know that. Um, but in your opinion, what are reasons a country might engage in a war, right? Uh, with the idea that, you know, you've gone through everything um, to try to solve possibly an engagement of a war, what would be reasons actually a country might engage in a war? Remember, your opinions extremely matter uh, in this classroom. It does not matter whether or not you are, you know, in your own apartment, uh, away from me. Uh, your opinions matter within this class, so it's really important. And I'll be posting actually some of the um, opinions. I'll be posting it within uh, our Google Classroom. So take a minute, get a pause, um, and pause it now. Yeah, and just to kind of clarify, guys, if you look, um, so some of us might be asking, where am I putting this do now, Mr. Budamalch? Uh You're gonna go to your assignment page already on your Google Classroom. Uh, you'll click on your assignment and the first thing that pops up is this do now and it'll say answer the following question below in full sentences. Make sure you uh, write in full sentences, guys. If you don't write in full sentences, then I can't give you full credit. And today's assignment is definitely weighed pretty heavy. It's 35% of your grade um, and it is uh, a lot of points. So uh, definitely make sure that you are uh, doing that. Uh, put your reply where you see like my little button here. Uh, try to make it into a different font. Uh, like if you want to look at fonts or whatever. Uh, I'll scroll up a little bit. See, like you have you have this area where there are fonts. All right, you can kind of play around with what your font looks like. Also, um, you know, like how with the size too, and you can also do colors too. Like I don't care what color it is. I'm sure that probably Essence will actually change your color or something like that, right? Because she's using actually colorful pens usually when I was creating them. Um, but no, in all seriousness, guys. Um, you know, have at it and uh, get back to me. So uh, put me on pause again and finish that do now and uh, we'll get back to the lesson, okay? At this point, you're probably done with your do now. Um, so there are many different opinions as to why a country might engage into a war. Uh, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna be focusing in on what were the major causes of World War I. And that's our aim for today. So we did our do now, we're at our agenda. We're going over the causes of World War I. Um, just kind of like uh, the background on the uh, European affairs over there. Again, mind you that if you're watching this video and you're like, wow, why is he being really limited about European, um, you know, affairs? It's because this is a U.S. history course. You're going to learn a lot more about uh, European imperialism and the expansion and the tensions between all of these countries uh, in 10th grade. Uh, but this is really like kind of a concise kind of like why it happened. Uh, we'll also go over something like MAIN, uh, which is an acronym. Uh, each letter stands for something, but it will be really helpful for you when you're trying to remember all of the reasons why that there were conflicts. Uh, and then we'll have an exit ticket. All right, so let's jump into it. Boom! So what were the causes of World War I, right? Um, so truth be told, we already kind of went over it a little bit, talking about like why there were certain forces um, or countries that were really like having a lot of issues with each other, right? Um, but essentially though, what's really important to understand is um, that, you know, in Europe, there was hostility that divided European leaders um, quite a bit. So essentially what had happened was nations in Europe believed that they needed to be the biggest and the best nation on the continent itself. 
After the unification of Germany, obviously Germany and France, as we were talking about during the Franco-Prussian War, uh, they have a lot, a lot of issues. And it was determined by France to try to limit Germany's power from growing. However, the Germans, realizing that, they start actually having tension with the French because they believe that the French want to uh, destroy the country in which they took years and years to try to reunify, right? Uh, then you have the British, on the other hand, that were really interested in their own uh, imperialism, right? We talked about British imperialism a little bit in class before you guys left. But uh, they were trying to be and were at the time the, the largest and uh, greatest navy in all of the world. And they figured that if they controlled the navy, being an island, um, if they had the best navy, they could not only protect themselves, but also protect their trade, right? And to be able to acquire any resources in which they needed to. Um, in addition, in places like Austria-Hungary, um, or the Austria-Hungarian uh, uh, Empire, they were really, like, again, like a, kind of like a, a kingdom uh, with, with uh, an archduke uh, and a duke just in general. And we'll talk about Archduke actually in the next lesson. And specifically, they were also interested in the expansion and trying to grow as much as they can as well. Same thing with the Ottoman Empire. So what we're seeing is, is that these nations want to grow as large as they can. And when they start to grow as large as they can, right, and you know, other nations like Russia also, which are already larger nations, when you start quote unquote expanding, they start getting closer and closer to each other. And the closer in which you get, and you have all these egos getting in there, um, you're definitely going to see some issues arising, right? So this idea of imperialism, when we were talking about expansion, right? We talked about imperialism in general. And I'm going to define imperialism in just a minute for those that need a refresher since, you know, it's been a while. Um, but using imperialism, right, um, to fuel their armies and fuel their countries and have resources for their armies and their country, right? Um, you know, European nations realizing, well, the more that we're expanding, the more, the closer that we're getting to our enemies. And if we're closer to our enemies, we need to make sure that we protect ourselves. So then the focus gets on militarism, right? Militarism in the sense, and we've talked about militarism before, but just to re recap, militarism is literally the, the art of the military. It's literally the philosophy that the, uh, of focusing your uh, resources and ideas, um, and a lot of your public policy and your manpower uh, into your military and growing your military as much as you can um, or as much as you want to. Um, which really now, like what you're having is these egos are all coming closer and closer to each other. Each one of them are starting to build uh, these armies and military. And, you know, if one small thing happens, you have massive militaries then that are going to be so close to each other that unfortunately war is possibly inevitable. But um, let's think about it from the perspective of the mil militarism in general. What I want you to do is uh, this little video right over here, you're going to see like, you know, I, I can click on it and it'll play. Uh, but this video is actually in... It's in your um, Google Classroom. So take a, take a minute, like two minutes, it's a two minute video. Um, take two minutes just to be able to just watch it. Uh, it goes over like why militarism was a really, really popular thing, how Europeans actually viewed war, which is something I didn't go over in this lecture right now, but uh, it's definitely uh, the, the way and the view of war for Europeans and then also Americans too, by the way. Mind you, um, during the during this time period, Theodore Roosevelt was an avid, um, you know, analysis, like a supporter of militarism in general, right? Uh, Great White Fleet, as we were talking about, and the expansion through uh, U.S. imperialism, too. Um, so just take a moment to kind of, like, watch it, and, and it gives you a better understanding and, and also footage of uh, what that militarism looks like, right? Uh, but what I want you to do, uh, we kind of went over it now, but um, the definition of imperialism, as we... Uh, solidified before we left was when a country extends their power and influence through either diplomacy, like remember we talked about the big stick diplomacy, um, or uh, military force, right? We talked about how many times the United States had kind of encountered Latin America 
Um, but what I want you to do is using this definition uh, in your worksheet and your assignment, um, how do you think imperialism could affect the world uh, going to war, right? Like, and try to think about, you know, our examples that we've talked about in class too. In what ways can that tension rise um, to resulting in the world basically going to war? Uh, so pause me, uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll talk about these acronyms. Uh, what were the four main reasons for World War One? Yeah, you know, I know it's a it's a bad joke, but like, yeah, I am allowed to do dad jokes because I'm a dad now. All right, yeah, just put put me on pause. Just put me on pause and just do your stop and jot. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, welcome back. So, some of you actually uh, probably had had brought up uh, examples in which we've talked about in U.S. history, right? Um, the further that you expand, right, um, the more, the closer image you're going to get to people in which you might not agree with. Also, though, a lot of people probably mention about resources, like what about natural resources in which every country, quote unquote, needs, but there is only a limited supply. So like, it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, during like Black Fridays at a mall, you guys don't even know what malls are anymore. It's like Black Friday is where somebody's trying to get something and they're like literally rushing in. It's like a battle to be able to get it. Um, unfortunately, you know, human beings are, are, are that way. And uh, that's definitely the case uh, in regards to large nations and who runs them. But what are the four main reasons why World War I happened? So as we said, the first one is militarism. And you're going to go into a little bit more in your assignment of like what is militarism, how it actually played a really big role in World War I. Uh, but that's definitely one of them. So that's the M. The other big part is alliances. We haven't really talked too much about alliances. So the assignment is really going to help you kind of understand like the importance of alliances um, for some nations um, and how that played a role, right? Uh, these alliances... You know, nobody's saying alliances are bad, but however, these kind of string of alliances are going to wrap different countries up into a lot of other people's business uh, that they normally wouldn't if they weren't in the alliances. Um, so anyways, that's one of them. And then the I is imperialism. Uh, imperialism, again, we've talked about imperialism and how that played a role. And then N is nationalism. Uh, so make sure you just pause this, get your notes down, and I will be back with your uh, uh, assignment. We are back, and we're looking at Maine, M-A-I-N, right? Militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism. And what you're going to do is you're going to go into Google Classroom, into your assignment, and what you're going to do is you're going to figure out how each and every one of these acronyms played a role into World War One, right? Uh, and make sure that you complete the, the organ graphic organizer as best as possible, right? So uh, let me show you what it, that looks like. If you go into your assignment, I'm going to drag you guys a little bit, sorry. Beep, beep. Uh, if you go into your assignment, right, it looks like this, right, you go all the way down, deep, 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 right? You're going to have this reading, it says main reasons for World War I. You're going to read and annotate the reading before each section. Now, some of the things that I want to highlight, how are we annotating? Let me show you the way in which we're going to annotate. This is the teaching aspect of it. Now, some of us do not annotate as much as we should, but we're going to show how to annotate. So let's just say this first sentence. Militar militarism refers to the belief by the government or people or both that the military should be used aggressively. And say that sentence is really important to me. I'm going to click on my little mouse right before the M, and I'm going to drag, right, the whole sentence. See how I've highlighted it? Now, that's not actually an annotation yet. My annotation is going to come when I go up and I take my highlighter color. You'll see it's right next to, like, this little A with a little line under it and next to the insert link. You're going to click this highlight color. When you click it, you're going to notice that you have all these different colors. I'm going to choose the highlighter color that I want, which is yellow. And you're going to notice after that, you've annotated it. That's what I want you to do. I don't want you to tell me, well, Mr. Buttermelch, I don't know how to annotate because 
I just showed you. Thanks, Mr. Buttermelch. You're welcome, random 801 student. I'm glad I'm there for you distantly. So uh, lastly, before uh, I go, is this. When I ask you what it means in your own words, I'm asking you what exactly does militarism mean in your own words? You need to give me actually in a, your own kind of way of how you interpret it, like what militarism means. Now, you should be actually doing a different font than I am because if you use the same font as I am, then guess what? You're not going to, I'm not gonna know which one's your answer or not. So you can change actually your font. You can change it to whatever you want. Do, 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 do. Let's just pick this one. Pew. And then you can start writing your point, right? And then now I know which one is yours and which one's mine. It's easier for me to read. Uh, I'm gonna say this. I am going to take points off if you use the same font as me. Why? Because it's a lot of work for me to convert all of that stuff and it should be a requirement. And you sure know how to do it since I'm teaching it to you. Anyways, don't mind announcements. We have a lot of those right now. So that's what I'm saying. That's your annotations and that's your own words. If you scroll further down, you'll see alliances, you'll see imperialism, you'll see nationalism. Uh, and then continue to the rest of the page. We have this graphic organizer, bum, bum, bum. And essentially what I want you to do is take those explanations and put those explanations here. It should be really easy. It's actually a copy and kind of paste thing. Uh, but what I want to know is how did this lead to war? Now look, if the writing, if the reading is not fully explaining how it led to war, guess what you have in front of you? A computer. And you're going to do research on it and you're going to be able to figure out how militarism, alliances, imperialism and nationalism play a role in the uh, start of world war one all right sweet well i hope you guys had a good lesson i hope you guys are warm and chilling at home um yeah i'll see you guys lesson four peace